The following video may contain sensitive topics. The views and opinions of the presenter to these are plainly his own. Furthermore, any and all views and opinions of the presenter do not in any way reflect the views, opinions, statements, and advocacies of his personal contacts, his family, his affiliations, and his profession. While the presenter makes a commitment that all content is original, he is obliged to cite references or acknowledge resources mentioned or used in the production of this video. This disclaimer is also written in the description below. May 5th of Anos Horribilis 2020, at approximately 8 o'clock in the evening, Manila time, Noonday UTC, with the final on-air broadcast of its flagship primetime news program, TV Patrol. ABS-CBN ended its free-to-air existence on both television and radio with the familiar voice of Peter Musni saying the final words heard from Channel 2. That day, which its journalist Jeff Canoy coined as the Cinco de Mayo incident, came as a shock not only for its mainstay viewers and listeners but also for the whole media industry. In reaction to this, I have made at least five videos about the topic on this channel and what seem to be the ramifications of such a chilling effect. A year later, we remember the day when the Sare Manok was forced to fly away from broadcast media, and it found its nest on a new platform where they would not be touched by the powers that be under pain of the curta curtailment of press freedom if the said broadcast shutdown was not one case already. With that said, what had happened to Filipino media a year after the Capamilia shutdown? This is ABS-CBN Corporation Channel 2 in the service of the Filipino. Now signing off. Hi Intrepid Gang, my name is Ian Rinyon, an independent media practitioner, freelance writer, and content creator. If the cold intro was not a dead giveaway already, we are going to take a look at the aftermath of the free TV and radio shutdown of ABS-CBN and what it meant for the media industry here in the Philippines, whether mainstream or social. I guess that by now you know the reasons why the powers that be wanted this media giant off the air. Quite honestly, it is really unfortunate that such a move became a major issue for the ones in power at the point of this recording, when it shouldn't be. I would like to reiterate what I said from last year's series of videos that while I questioned the defective moral compass of ABS-CBN uh, prior to its free TV and radio shutdown, I do not, repeat, I do not look for its demise on the air in any way, shape, or form. The executives even admitted that they had lapses in judgment in their media operations, especially in the news department, although this still is debatable and still depends on who you're asking. Still, jobs were unfortunately cut from the network and some of its assets dismantled across the islands. I can certainly share some anecdotes from one of my former college buddies who initially wanted to pursue music but then changed into media studies and eventually found her way into the Capamilia Triangle at Mother Ignacia State. Fortunately for her, she kept her job but she told me it's never the same again and I think it's the same story for most of the people that you know, especially in the um, in the background that I have, I really admit that uh, a lot of people are really dismayed, especially in the uh, in the background that I have. Na nasa ano ako, nasa media media studies ako. It's really absolutely shocking. Although ABS-CBN as a powerhouse network is no more, or at least it isn't at the moment. It survived and thrived by outsourcing its staff, content, and resources to at least two media networks, and many others across all platforms hired or absorbed professionals and presenters who the Capamilia Network had to tearfully let go. At that time, I was still constantly looking for a secure job to pay the bills and to invest in the future. 
But then again, out of empathy towards those who have invested their very lives in mainstream media, it is just right that I would let them have the jobs I was absolutely pursuing at that time. And besides, being an independent alternative media practitioner with a freelance job related to the field I have studied for four years only made me grateful that this was the, the thing that I was looking for. And of course, such setup is indeed liberating. While limited in terms of broadcasting, ABS-CBN more than compensated its operations through its online and cable platforms basically consolidating and simulcasting their news programs on the limited broadcasting operations they have left in-house. What it meant was more flexibility even if wider dissemination is sacrificed. But then came the events of April 2021 where two very strange incidents happened. First, ABS-CBN's defense beat Shara Zambrano and her camera crew was set to sail for Ayungan Shoal aboard a Filipino fishing vessel from Palawan. But before the boat's crew even got to Shara's target scoop, Chinese vessels, both from its Coast Guard and its Navy, harassed and chased the boat for hours. This close call to perhaps certain death garnered Miss Zambrano accolades from no less than the Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces, himself a very decorated war hero and the living Medal of Valor recipient, and from many sensible Filipinos as well. The feat also gained criticism from the usual suspects, claiming that they stirred the hornet's nest by insisting to go on an assignment that might provoke a third world war. However, this was not the most cruel blow. ABS-CBN's dedicated cable news channel, ANC, have allowed a China-themed news broadcast a time slot for its program. And people who supported the Kapamilya Network since the shutdown quickly armed themselves with pitchforks. To their credit, ABS-CBN quickly plugged off the program off its roster early and apologized to the Filipino people for the absolute blunder. Talk about being in the service of the Filipino. And now, we return to the black or snow static screen that ABS-CBN left grudgingly on the Channel 2 broadcast slot. Many who got used to the Kapamilya network growing up would like for them to return to that same channels and frequencies soon, while others think that such an incident should not have happened in the very first place. You may recall that I posted a question at the beginning of this video on what would now happen to Filipino media a year after the Kapamilya shutdown. In the Reporters Without Borders 2021 World Press Freedom Index, the Philippines was placed at 138th place, 138 out of 180 countries in the world. Across Southeast Asia, we were below Timor-Leste at 71, Indonesia at 113, Malaysia at 119, and Thailand at 137. And we have Myanmar, Cambodia, Brunei, surprisingly Singapore, Laos, and Vietnam below us. In the country overview, the RSF was quoted saying, The Philippine Congress, most of which supports the president, refused in the summer of 2020 to renew the franchise of the country's biggest TV network, ABS-CBN, depriving millions of Filipinos of absolutely essential public interest reporting during the pandemic. You can check out uh, the country overview of the Philippines uh, on the RFC, RSF's uh, website. I'll link it on the description below. The apparent curtailment of the freedom of the press, depending on who you ask, would just make things more confusing and the future of broadcast media Bleaker. While I have given up watching broadcast TV uh, for a few years now because of the content they have made, I could not turn a blind eye to people who depend on public broadcast to be informed. But they themselves are also considering selling off or giving away their TV sets or even transistor radios out of disappointment. And in speaking of a public broadcasting service, we lack one. 
Channel 4 is state-owned and it is a different league of its own. What's worse is the exponential and uncontrollable rise of alternative media sources, whether legitimate or sadly fake. And we all know why it is a bother. But to conclude, I hope we could all agree that this media madness should be stopped. And that media professionals and their regulators should seize its biases and work for the benefit of public interest and the common good if they would like to be trusted by the people who monitor the information they disseminate to the masses. I guess we could all agree that we don't like GMA or TV5 to suffer the same fate of ABS-CBN, am I right? And before I end this video, I would just uh, like to request to you to subscribe to this channel by clicking the big red subscribe button down there and making it gray. Ring the notification bell as well. And please like this video if you have, uh, if you're interested with this kind of content and share it to the friends that you have who is really into this kind of content. Anyway, I don't know what I'm saying here. It's not, this is, this part is not scripted, but then again, uh, that's the favor that I wanted to tell you. And with all that said, this is Ian reminding you to, at all times and all platforms, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, Intrepid Gang, look alive, stay alive, and see you next time. Long live the fourth estate. Ian out. Hanggang sa muli. Kapamilya.